This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good afternoon to all. So today we are going to look at few concepts of unit one, that is biosignals, okay? So before getting into the topic, we, what we have seen in the last class? We have seen some components of cell, okay? So say for example, cytoplasm, nucleolus, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, protoplasm, lysosomes, yes? We have seen all the functions and parts of the human cell. After that, we have seen what is biosignal, okay? How it is uh, extracted out of human body. So today we are going to look at a little bit more what are all the systems present in human body, okay? So today's agenda is biosignals, biosignal classification, source of biomedical signals, okay? I have already told you that signals are taken out of human body, which is said to be biosignal. Okay, signal is nothing but a uh, uh, parameter which we are going to diagnose the patient, whether they are infected, whether they are diseased or not. Okay, so biosignal classification, how it is classified based upon the characteristics and nature of the signal. And what are all the source we can extract the signal out of human body? This is what we are going to look at in today's session. Okay, so what are biosignals? So the signal which generated out of human body, which influences a human, which is said to be biosignals. Okay, but uh, signal is nothing but a parameter. I told you, right? Signal is a parameter that is observable from the object. Okay, here the object is human body. I'm going to extract the signal out of the human body. Okay, so next that signal is taken out of my human body. So why it is called biosignal? Okay, so bio is nothing but living object. I'm extracting signal from living object, then that is said to be bio signal. Is that clear? We can take signals from anything, uh, say for example, audio system, uh, voice recognition system, or we can take digital signals, digital signal out of your uh, system, communication system, everything we have deal with uh, analog and digital signals, isn't it? So if you are going to extract signal from human body, that is said to be biological signal, biosignal. And next, why biosignals? Because it is used to carry all the information about the living object, okay? So how uh, healthy the living object is, how diseased the living object is, what are all the factors going to affect the living object? All these kind of questions can be raised by using this biosignal extraction, okay? So we can also diagnose the patient. Okay, so biosignal can be used to understand the underlying physiological mechanism of a specific biological event or system. We have any number of organs, nerves, blood, everything inside our body. So, it, so all together should work properly. Okay, if there is a, some flaws in some organ, then we, the proper functioning of any system get affected. Okay, so this is diagnosed by getting biosignal from human body. <clears throat> And as you can see here, we have two different diagrams, okay? One is taken from the previous days, I mean earlier years, and one is taken out from the recent years, okay? So the uh, difference between those two will be uh, the technological upgradation in the medical field, okay? So if you can see here, what happens? Here only three persons are there, is it not? Only three persons, or all, all three persons are used to, or, uh, there to find some disease okay here he is a physician okay this person is a physician and the this is a patient this person is a patient and he is uh, uh came with his mother or someone else okay so the physician earlier this physician used to sense the palpation okay so say pulse is a base for they are going to diagnose whether this uh, this person will be deceased or not okay this is done in the earlier years 
okay so let's say for example 500 bc okay if you can see his uh, see this diagram picture you could see everywhere you can see the monitors okay each and every monitor is monitors individual organs in the body okay say this is your uh, heart function this is your lung function and we have some uh, oxygen level monitors and we have uh, uh, pulse monitor temperature monitor okay so everything are here we have more number of monitors more number of wires probes connected to the patient okay so how the patient reacts everything will be monitored so this is the recent trends it is 2016 and the coming years okay and for the example of uh, recent technology medical technology is polysomnogram okay so nothing but a person who is attacked or who is uh, affected by uh, coma okay coma or uh, paralysis everything uh, this is this kind of disease affects the human body more so if the person is affected uh, by that diseases they can't able to move open uh, open their eyes or speak whatever okay so all these uh, uh, struggles will be eradicated with the help of uh, upgradation of medical technology okay so here this person is affected in coma he will sleep for all the time uh, 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 he will not able to take food and all okay everything are, uh, are going with medicines so the person's uh, inhalation exhalation and uh, the person's brain activity uh, the person's uh, uh, heart rate everything will be monitored using sensors okay so we are going to place some sensors over the nose to measure the airflow okay because recent uh, updation we have uh, in inducted inculcated electronics in the medical field okay so i am going to place a sensor near the nose so that i can able to measure the airflow and next we have sensors at the face and scalp okay the scalp sensors are used to detect the brain activity okay and we are also moving <clears throat> to eye eye so that the eyeball movement will be taken out and next we are having some sensors over the ribs so this ribs are in terms of density having uh, uh, moving it, it's like an elastic material okay so whenever the person breathes or exhales that is uh, uh, reflected using this plastic belt i mean elastic belt okay so this elastic belt sensors around the chest and belly meshes amount of effort to breathe so next we have one more sensors here in the finger okay so this finger is used to measure the amount of oxygen in the plate okay and next we have uh, connected all these wires all the sensors output to the machine so that it will record all the machine all the data to the machine and it will showcase that uh, result in the monitor as uh, like waves waves or numbers like uh, 50 degree 20 degree likewise whatever the parameter taken out from different organs that will be displayed over the display okay so it is connected with the computer and also it is used to indicate to the physician that this person are having these kind of parameters if there is a, a flaws or if the threshold will not meet by the patient then it is uh, uh, used to uh, alert the physician or uh, nearby uh, relatives okay so like that kind of uh, uh, things are possible in recent medical electronics field a next classification of signals we have basic classification depending upon the nature of the bio signal one is electric magnetic chemical mechanical optical and thermal so electrical mechanical uh, all these are some kinds of bio signals which is extracted for, depending upon the nature of the bio signal okay so and next comes depending upon the origin of the bio signal uh we have few classifications okay so endocrine system nervous system cardiovascular system vision system auditory system musculoskeletal system respiratory system gastrointestinal system and blood system okay these are all the system which belongs to biosignal which is depending upon its origin okay so origin is all these systems are comprises in human body okay so first of all we are going to look at endocrine system okay so what is endocrine system it works by using hormones okay you can see a uh, few people are affected with a, with hormone imbalances okay so this endocrine system is predominantly work for secreting of hormones inside the human body okay so this endocrine 
system works by using hormones which are carried through circulatory system okay so hormone generated endocrine system both are same so without hormones your endocrine system will not work properly okay so what are the glands present in the endocrine system we have pituitary which is uh, used to govern the several other endocrine glands okay pituitary is important because it is going to govern all your endocrine system glands and uh, thyroxin which increases metabolism okay thyroid glands secretes thyroxin okay Th if, if we have balanced thyroxin will have proper digestion metabolism is nothing but it is used to segregate some acids to digest your food okay and our food that the grow at the digest now we have some acid okay that acid will be segregated by this endocrine glands okay so uh, endocrine system here we have thyroid thyroid segregates thyroxin which increases metabolism in the body if the deficiency of this particular hormone we have low metabolic rate and retardation if this particular gland excess then we have nervousness and high metabolic rate because if thyroid thyroid gland segregates more thyroxine then what happens the person will become very stout okay the digestion tract will get affected okay we have so many side effects if uh, thyroid will it get increases the segregation of thyroxine get increases we have more problems in the human body okay so this should be balanced <coughs> and next we have adrenal glands adrenal glands is used to regulate the blood pressure and flow and pancreas glands used to segregate insulin okay it secretes insulin because uh, this plays a vital role in diabetic patient okay so why diabetic patients are uh, intaking insulin because deficiency of result in uh, results in increased glucose in blood which leads to condition called diabetes okay so deficiency if insulin segregation is not sufficient by the pancreas glands the patient is affected by diabetes okay once the person is affected by in uh, affected by diabetes they, they are advised to, to take insulin okay so that they will balance the hormones okay it is already uh, uh, this gland by default this gland will secrete insulin okay if if the particular gland get affected the insulin will not get secreted adanalle external la nam insulin potu body balance pandrom yaarukku sugar patient diabetic patients okay so next gland is duodenum gland okay duodenum gland produces hydrochloric acid okay so i told you right some acids will be secretes in the human body to uh, to make your food digest this is the gland which is used to uh, produce hydrochloric acid okay if if you not having your meal properly but then this hydrochloric acid secretion increases so that it affects the intestine as ulcers okay why people are having ulcers because ex exceeds of exceeding the limit of your hydrochloric acid okay it generate panite da irukum nee meal sedukama vittana and the acid unoda vaithila punnu pannidu ulcer pannidu seriya appo idu generate aayite irukradanal na food consume panna na in the acid food digestion ku important so that will digest your food okay that will not affect your uh, intestine directly okay so this is important duodenum gland next placenta and gonads these two gla uh, glands are used for reproductions okay so as you can see here endocrine system is a collection of glands okay i told you right it is a collection of glands each and every glands deals with the hormones of the human body so you can see here endocrine system of man and woman thalamus hypothalamus pituitary glands pituitary gland will be present near the brain okay so this is pineal body this is thyroid thyroid which is present in the neck thyroid and parathyroid we have thalam thymus heart pancreas pancreas is used to secrete insulin okay see here we have adrenal gland and kidney this is ovary and this is testis okay this are all comes in the endocrine system the collection of glands of an organism that secrete hormones directly into the circulatory system to be carried towards a distant target organ okay so this is called endocrine system the signals taken out from the system is chemical and optical right and next is what nervous system 
So nervous system is classified into two. One is central nervous system, another one is peripheral nervous system. Okay. So under central nervous system, we are having brain. Okay. So the brain is split into three. One is cerebrum, cerebellum, and mainstream. Medulla oblongata, right? So under your cerebrum, we have four lobes: frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe. Okay. Each and every lobe is dedicatedly used for individual operations. Say, for example, if you take frontal lobe, it deals with intelligence and imagination. If you take parietal lobe, it is uh, used for sensory center, and occipital lobe used for vision, and temporal lobe used for hearing and memory. Okay. And cerebellum, cerebellum. Which is uh, <coughs> responsible for muscular movements. Okay, so next we have brainstem. Brainstem is nothing but backbone. Okay, uh, we have thalamus, hypothalamus, medulla oblongata. Okay, thalamus uh, responsible for sensory, and hypothalamus responsible for feelings, and medulla oblongata is responsible for heart and lung work. Okay, so this is a central nervous system. Uh, inside your brain, the unit of brain is neurons. Okay, so we have 10 power 10 neurons present inside the human body, human brain. Okay, neurons will only present in the human brain. And peripheral nervous system. Okay, so peripheral nervous system consists of motor and sensory actions. Already we have uh, discussed this uh, with example. Okay, so this uh, uh, motor and sensory nerves or uh, comes under peripheral nerve system we can uh, we can conduct outwards or inwards the path okay so it is classified into again two classifications under motor system one is sympathetic and parasympathetic okay sensory na feel pandrudu motor na actions okay so this motor is classified into two one is sympathetic and parasympathetic i have given you the example like pupil of our eye so it dilated and contracted whenever it dilated and contracted these two operations takes place sympathetic and parasympathetic okay so when you look at the object very closely then your pupil will get uh, extracted okay uh, expander or contractor of your pupil depends upon the object when which the person will see okay if i'm going to look at the sun sun pakumbodu my pupil will get contract okay so again a where object per mother it get dilated extract okay similar way these two actions takes place under motor system and signals from nervous system i have taken uh, this nervous system diagram okay central nervous system and peripheral nervous system so peripheral devices up up in our peripheral systems up in our we are taking uh, the signal from the backbone to other parts of the organs okay so central nervous system which is used for generating the signal generating the important signal which or influence a human body how he can react how he can work or like something okay so this is frontal lobe here we have parietal at the back you have occipital and temporal at the down bottom of your frontal we have temporal lobe and this is your medulla cerebellum here we have medulla and this is your backbone okay if i have taken signals from the backbone then that is called peripheral nervous system. If I'm taking signals directly from the brain, then that is said to be nervous system, central nervous system. Okay. What are the signals taken out from the brain? We can take electroencephalogram. Okay. In order to uh, test your brain, we are going for EEG, electroencephalogram. Okay. So next is what cardiovascular system. So cardiovascular is nothing but it deals with heart and lungs. Okay. So we have taken the signal out of your heart as ECG, electrocardiogram okay so uh, we can also use to measure blood pressure heart rate uh, oxygen content everything in the uh, signal analysis of, of your heart okay so how you're going to visualize the signal taken from the heart by using your ultrasonic imaging mri ultrasonic x-ray okay we have many technologies and methods to take signals from heart okay cardiovascular system is the combination of heart and lungs next vision system vision system now it is dealing with your eyes okay it deals with eyes left eye and right eye okay so this is your eyes which is connected to your brain through your thalamus okay this is your thalamus okay this is optic tracks and here we have 
connected to my brain. So this is connected to my brain. This is left brain and right brain. Okay, and we can take signals out of the vision as EEG, visual cortex, and VEP, visual evoked potential. Next, EOG, electrooculogram, and ERG, electroretinogram. These are all signals taken from the eyes. Okay, so eyes is directly connected to the brain, so that I'm going for EEG, electroencephalogram. Out of that, I'm taking visual cortex because it is connected to the brain, right? So I can take uh, the functions of or I can diagnose the eye with the help of EEG signal as well. And visual evoked potentials. I'm going to place some electrodes nearby your eyes and skull, okay? I mean the scalp, so that I can take VEP potentials as well. And EOG, electrooculogram, electroretinogram. The functions of the retina and the eye nerves, uh, optic nerves will be uh, diagnosed with the help of all these technologies. And next, electroretinography. Okay, so as you can see here in this diagram, this is used to measure electrical responses of various cells types in the retina, including the photoreceptors. Okay, so inside our eye, we have rods and cones. Okay, so rods and cones, which is used to detect the object. Okay, so these uh, signals will be extracted from the eyes with the help of your electrodes. Okay, say for example, from uh, from this diagram, you could you can see here we are placing some electrodes. Okay, this is the electrode where we are going to extract the signal near your eyes, whether it is working properly or not. Okay, I can also take signal out of your lenses i'm putting lens this contact lens is connected with electrode it it extract the signal from the eyes and the functions of retina everything connected to my eye it is extracting the signal out of your eyes and it is given as input to my differential amplifier okay and here i have i have pasted some reference signal sorry okay here i have placed some reference signal reference uh, terminal and here we have ground signal okay this is your operational amplifier why we are going for uh, amplifiers because the signal taken out of the human body is less uh, it is uh, low signal okay it is in small range so i'm going to convert it into a boosting signal so that i'm going for some amplifiers so this differential amplifier gives the difference between this extracted signal and the reference signal if there is a mismatch in these two signals then obviously we come to know that there is some problem in the eyes if it is equal or it is normal then we are we are going to the conclusion that the eye is working properly Okay, likewise, we are going to take signals out of our human eye. Okay, and next is what that is said to be electroretinography. I'm uh, analyzing the performance of the retina by extracting signals with the help of electrodes placing over the eyes. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, placing in the uh, eyes as lens. And next, we are having auditory systems. Okay, so auditory system na k karthik. So k karthik na ina pannu EEG, auditory evoked potential. It is also uh, coming uh, under your EEG, electroencephalogram. And next, we are getting signals from outer ear. So that is auditory canal. Okay. That is next, the pre-processing compresses of outer ear and middle ear. So in the outer ear, we are getting signal. And in the middle ear, we are having eardrum, hammer, anvil, stirrup, oval window. Okay. Inside your ear, you will have all these things and after that the uh, sound will be getting to your inner ear okay so where we have cochlear basilar membrane organ of corti this is spectral analysis okay after that we are having central auditory system pattern processing so your sound will reaches through these blocks outer ear middle ear inner ear and central auditory system so that whatever the audi audi i um, mean uh, sound signals received by your ear will be sensed by the brain okay because it is it is responsible for auditory system brain is responsible for vision auditory sensing and motor okay all these actions done with the help of brain okay we are going to uh, extract or diagnose the ear auditory system with the help of brain uh, technology that is eeg electroencephalogram and next is what skeletal system okay so what is skeletal system 
it is a framework of the human body is skeleton okay framework of human body without any organs blades and nerves that is said to be your skeleton and what is uh, the application of the skeletal system it provides mechanical stability for the body and it is used to protect the delicate organs like heart liver and all okay so what is the application of this ribs ribs are used to protect the heart and lung and internal organs okay if your high if, if your hand is affected or uh, get cut you can able to live but or if your leg will get cut you can able to live but what happens when your organs internal organs get cut or affected or injured you can't able to live okay so that deals a very complicated thing so that all internal organs are protected with the help of skeleton system that is ribs we have two not six bones in the human body okay so and it's it serves as a reservoir for calcium phosphorus and bone marrow which is which blood cells are formed okay so your bone the strongness of the bone is measured with the help of calcium okay if you have weakness in the bones that you are supposed or advised to intake more calcium and phosphorus things food rich foods okay so this is your skeletal system top of the skeletal system which is called cranium skull middle of the skeletal system you have pelvis bottom of the skeletal system food bones okay we have classified into three top middle and bottom top is called cranium skull middle of the skeletal is called pelvis and bottom of the skeletal is called food bones and muscular system we know what is skeletal system now we are going to look at muscular system so muscular system is nothing but the movement of various parts of the body are caused by the muscles okay we have three basic muscles one is voluntary muscle involuntary muscle cardiac muscle okay so what is voluntary muscle voluntary muscles are worked at our will For example arm muscles namma nenikkum bodhu namma action pandrom correct ah so that is comes under your voluntary muscles what is involuntary muscle work without our knowledge okay so example foot canal i am not ordering my foot canal to work it is working automatically okay that is not in our control but moving of your arms and legs are under our control okay so whatever the muscle and are under our control that comes under your voluntary muscles what are all we are not having control over that that comes under your involuntary muscles and next is what cardiac muscle so cardiac muscle helps in functioning of the heart day and night without tired okay so without any tiredness your heart function heart function will going uh, keep on going so this is comes under your third classification of muscle that is cardiac muscle three classification voluntary muscle involuntary muscle and cardiac muscle right and next is musculoskeletal system okay the combination of previous two system that is skeletal system and muscular system which combinedly called musculoskeletal system so emg what is emg this is the technology this is the analyzing process of muscle so uh, muscle will be diagnosed with the help of this emg technology electromyogram and visualization mri x ray radiography accelerometry stabilography okay so these are all some visualization techniques of musculoskeletal system and we have the next system is respiratory system so it is concerned with breathing and respiration okay so the main organ supports this respiratory system is lungs do you have any doubt am i fast no yes or no no okay so this is respiratory system uh, next which deals with the organ lungs and it is used for breathing and respiration okay so whenever we are breathing this respiratory system converts your uh, impure blood into pure blood okay so this respiratory system uh, predominantly works for purifying detoxifying your blood okay so we have taken air from the surroundings through your nose where it has windpipe okay that windpipe is called nasal cavity okay so that nasal cavity has more hairs so what is the application of hairs in the nose because 
it is used like a filter okay it filters all the dirt and uh, uh, things present in the surround surroundings and it will allow only the air inside the wind pipe okay? the dirt particles are removed by the hair and next comes breathing in it's called breathing in is called inspiration breathing out is called expiration when we are going to inhale and exhale the air your rib cage will expand and contract okay i told you on uh, the previous pictures uh, plethysmograph okay so in that we are placing some elastic elastic material with the, with the sensors over the body so that the elasticity of the particular uh, belt uh, indicates the inhalation and exhalation of the patient all right so here we have breathing in is called inspiration breathing out is called expiration okay that air from the windpipe will move to your bronchi okay so bronchi is nothing but it is a branch like structure which is present inside your lungs so your windpipe is directly connected to your lungs we have two lungs that is right lung and left lung okay so that is distributed to both the lungs through your bronchi and inside the lungs we have alveoli okay so uh, it is the air taken from the windpipe to the bronchi and it reaches the alveoli present in the lungs so alveoli is like a sac like structure okay which has oxygen okay that sac like structure locks the oxygen what we are inhaling if we have a carbon dioxide or some other gases in the inhalation process then that is taken out through some other processes okay so what is the application of lung it is used to lock the oxygen in the alveoli right that is the place where we are going to exchange the gases right so next is what respiratory system we can take signals like chemical signal mechanical signal spirometry signal plethysmography okay so here we will have chemical signal is used to have gas concentration and mechanical air flow pressure and volume and spirometry flow volume and plethysmography volume volume na evlo nam eduthirukom apdingra amount of air is called volume seriya so here this is your respiratory system this is frontal sinus as uh, phenoid sinus nasal cavity this is nasal vestibule this is oral cavity pharynx epiglottis okay everything is here and this is your windpipe and this is your rind lung okay so this is your uh, right lung and this is your left lung we have a diaphragm at the bottom okay diaphragm at the bottom of your uh, lung and inside your lung we have uh, lobes superior lobes lower bronchus right superior middle superior right inferior everything we are having okay so this is your bronchi and here we have alveoli this tree like structure is called alveoli okay so if, uh, from this uh, magnified diagram you can look at here so this is your uh, vein pulmonary vein and pulmonary arteries veins and arteries are used to carry the blood to and from different parts of the organs okay so here we have alveoli sacs which is used to store your oxygen this is alveoli duct and this is connecting tissues okay so inside your uh, alveoli we are ca we can able to store oxygen content okay this, this is what present inside the respiratory system idu therinja podu ipodiki right so we have nasal cavity next followed by that windpipe okay here we have one pipe and next it is divided into two for left lung and right lung inside the lung you will having alveoli alveoli is nothing but it is a sac like structure sac bag madri irukum okay so bag madri irukadala i am going to store oxygen content where i can do exchanging of gases and next is what spirography okay spirography is a technology which is used to measure the lung capacity how uh, volume uh, how, how much of volume we can inhale and exhale using some metric, spirometric spirometric technology that is what taken here so your inhalation and exhalation will be measured with the help of this signal okay here the signal is taken uh, from the spirometry machine this is tidal volume okay between 2000 to 3000 milliliters lung volume uh, present between 2000 to 3000 
milliliters. This is tidal volume, and here we have inspir inspiratory reserve volume. Okay, from 3000 to 6000 is called inspiratory reserve volume, and between your uh, 0 to 1000, we have residual volume. Residual volume now, conch gas now lungs Okay, you will you will really let us one there on a body flight. That is called residual. Okay, so I'm going to uh, have the range from 1000 to 2000. That is called expiratory reserve volume. Now we will expire panla will in exhale panala. That is expiratory reserve volume and vital capacity. Now it is taken from your uh, expiratory volume to my inspiratory volume. You know, you will come with the you will be done vital capacity. Okay, so inspiration capacity is taken from your 2000 to 6000. This is inspiration and functional residual capacity now would expiratory volume along with my residual volume. The sum of two these these two will given us uh, output as functional residual capacity. residual So I have this residual volume and expiratory reserve volume. Uh, for my functional residual capacity and total lung capacity now the combination of these two inspiration capacity and residual capacity summation gives me total lung capacity okay this is the measurement meter of my total lung capacity spirometer so uh, this tube will be inserted into the patient's mouth okay so the patient should inhale and exhale with the help of this tube so that the diaphragm present inside this will move uh, from one place to another the signal will be extracted okay if the person inhaled more the signal will uh, move from this place to this place okay whenever the person exhale then the signal will comes down inhalation signal rises ex exhalation signal downs okay decreases likewise it continues for many uh, rounds okay once the patient reaches the threshold then uh, it is a proper lung they will decide that it is a proper lung if the patient couldn't able to reach that threshold then they will affected by some type of infections or some type of disease in the lungs okay this is the technology which is used to measure total lung capacity next is what gastrointestinal system we have few systems uh, one among that was gastrointestinal system so this is used for digesting the food okay so this is the food is disintegrated chemically so that it can be absorbed so i have told you that some some of the glands will secrete, secrete some chemical uh, act, chemical uh, things hydrochloric acid okay so that hydrochloric acid will be used for digestion food okay so that is why it is called integrated chemically the food is disintegrated chemically okay so that it can be absorbed the stomach wall contains various kinds of glandular cells okay that's that is also used to separate hydrochloric acid pepsin and mucus this is the chemical actions which is used for digestion and next it is also used to extract the waste through excretory system okay the waste is thrown out of the body through the excretory system so the uh, excretory system now waste uh, remove under the excretory system so yeah so energy obtained by metabolism whereby the digestive system burns carbohydrates fat proteins and all Okay, metabolism no digestive system the metabolism so metabolism now in the chemicals use for food the one the digest panavikro opting the metabolism okay up the secretion of hydrochloric acid pepsin and mucus all should should be in proper range up the metabolism and also your uh, hormone supports metabolism glands that is glands right so next is what a combustion process needs oxygen and the pro products or carbon dioxide urine i mean uh, urea water and nitrous substance okay so the waste materials are uh, taken out from the human body through excretory system that is called combustion process combustion process is nothing but it uh, removes or it separates good thing and bad thing in the human body from the food and this technology which we are going to look at for uh, gastrointestinal system mri x-ray ultrasound imaging chemical signals electrogastrogram so these are all some methods where we can extract the signals to diagnose the gastrointestinal system so this is oral cavity here we have pancreas this is esophagus okay so it's a food pipe food pipe that is called esophagus this is pharynx tongue oral cavity and we have some liver here and duodenum gallbladder gallbladder na kalliral okay so duodenum common bile duct and this is your intestine okay 
this is anus and this is rectum large intestine this is large intestine this is your small intestine pancreas pancreas used to secrete insulin correct so this is your stomach this is gastro intestinal system and next comes blood system the last system is blood system of human body okay so uh, can you tell me what are all the things present inside the blood can anyone tell me what are all the components present in the blood what color of rbc dharanita rbc okay wbc then good good answer then what else is present in the blood do we have blood in the body do you have do we have blood hemoglobin okay someone else can also answer someone else can also answer okay inside your plate we have plasma or not much super plasma then well tried so inside our blood we are having few components like wbc white blood corpuscles red blood corpuscles plasma platelets okay so all these are used to for uh, functioning your organs internal organs of human body okay so we have some 5 to 6 liters inside our human body so blood system have a uh, related with your heart and lung okay because heart and lungs are used for purification of your blood important for purifying your blood and heart is used for pumping your blood to all parts of the body okay so as you can see here we are having blood system so this is your lungs left lung and right lung the blood is taken through veins and arteries okay so this is pulmonary artery and this is pulmonary vein so through uh, pulmonary vein the blood is given as input to my heart the red and uh, blue color denotes the oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood okay so the red color shows that this is oxygenated blood the blue color shows that this is deoxygenated blood which is rich in carbon dioxide okay so this rich in blood, carbon dioxide blood will be given as input to my lungs through my heart okay so that the sac alveoli present in the lungs which is sac sac like structure that holds oxygen will be mixed with my blood okay so that i'll get red color uh, oxygenated blood will be given as input to my heart again okay so uh, from the diagram you can see your heart is divided into four chambers one is right atrium left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle okay so through this atrium your purified blood or oxygenated blood will be given to other parts of the body and your right atrium receives deoxygenated blood okay this deoxygenated blood will be get into your right atrium and right ventricle and through aorta it will reaches your lungs see here it will branch to your lungs okay so from uh, superior vena cava the blood enters right atrium and right ventricle and it gives to my aorta where it branches to my lungs okay here okay and here it branches to my lungs and inside the lungs it is uh, exchanging the gases it adds oxygen content to my deoxygenated blood and converts it into oxygenated blood so this oxygenated blood will be taken from the lungs left lung and right lung and given as input to my aorta here okay so it is given as input to my left atria and left ventricle through left ventricle i am taking this to other parts of the body 
okay your atrium is uh, divided into two right and left and similar way your ventricle also divide by two that is right and left with a small uh, transparent material between the ventricles this is thick muscle and your atrium is a light muscles not than that much thicker like your ventricles okay so this is called capillaries it is a tube like structure which carries blood okay the largest blood vessel present in the human body is called aorta other blood vessels are smaller in size but the larger size of your blood vessel present in the human body is aorta that is connected directly to your heart heart is used for pumping operation it will not purify your signal i mean purify your blood it is used to pump the blood from heart to other parts of the body okay what is lungs operation lungs operation is used to purify your blood oxygenated blood it converts deoxygenated into oxygenated blood okay oxygenated blood this is pumping of operation okay this is blood system so that we have uh, come to the end of the session today do you have any doubt do you have any doubt no okay if you have no doubt then we will wind up the class if you have doubt let me ask okay so i'll i'll question few students uh okay kavya darshini are you here kavya darshini Kavya Darshan is here, Agalya. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Agalya. What is biosignal, Agalya? The signal which we are taking out from the human body is called biosignal, ma'am. Very good. Excellent answer, Galia. Thank you. Angel. Angel. Avinash. Are you here, Avinash? Charu Preeti. Charu Preeti. Ma'am. Yes, Charu. Define the classification of biosignals. How we are going to classify the biosignal? If it is wrong, no problem. I'll make you right. Try some answers. Classification of biosignals. ECG. Okay. ECG. EMG. EMG. EEG. EEG. Okay. Classifications or depends on nature. And the characteristics, correct? Origin, chemical, mechanical, electrical. Okay, a similar kind of classifications are there in the biosignal. Okay, thank you, Charu Preeti. Good answer. Well try. And I need Arunatraj. 
Arun Natraj. What are systems available in human body? This is our today's agenda, right? Systems. Yes, ma'am. Can you name some systems? Circulatory system. Okay. Circulatory, ma'am. Right. Cardiovascular. Super. Then respiratory. Hmm. Digestive. Okay, good. Endocrine. Endocrine. Muscular. Skeletal. Musculoskeletal. Yes. Auditory system. Nervous. System. Nervous system. Correct. Very good answer. Thank you, Arun and Raj. Thank you. And uh, next, I need uh, Brinda. Yes. Brinda. Yes. Ma'am. Solida, what is cardiovascular system? Ma'am, diagnostic procedure. Cardiovascular. Cardi cardiac arrest in solid pangal. Have you heard the term cardiac arrest? Yes, ma'am. What is cardiac? Cardiac member is called heart. Heart. Okay. Disease. Cardiovascular na heart with the function of lungs. Patala two slides funadi cardiovascular system. Heart disease. Heart, uh, heart and lungs function put together is called cardiovascular system. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Good, good. Thank you. And next, Gokila Priya. Gokila Priya. Ma'am. Yes, Gokila Priya. What is pyrography? What is pyrography? Um, it's a uh... Pyrography. Breathing measurement. Correct. A lung yeah. volume measurement for our machine. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Respiratory system for machine control. Thank you. Very good, Kokla Priya. And I'm now going to uh, off the recording. Okay. Stay back.